thank you, the Lord, for another day of life. Amen. And uh, we are thankful uh, to Dr. David Kelly. Amen. His invitation and to the Christ Fellowship family. Uh, I know that we were glad to be in celebration with Dr. Kelly a couple of weeks ago. It was his 65th birthday. Amen. Somebody say 65. 65. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I always do? Okay.
are as a nation of people to be able to impact the community to which we are in and to be able to provide service in terms of food and everything as well. So uh, the name of the church hasn't changed. It's just a brand that is slightly mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we try to live up to that point. So I want to thank those who came from Bethlehem Nation. Would you please be so kind as to stand one more time? Thank you so much. Amen. Okay. Sunday morning. Yes. Well, 
and even on weeknights. Yeah. Yeah, there's the argument that the church has changed. There's the argument that the church on Sunday mornings is scattered. Yes, there's the argument that the church is not what it used to be. There's the argument that uh, the church is not relevant. But we're here because it is relevant. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're not. We're not here to do anyone favors. Our presence says thank you. Just our very presence says to the Lord, thank you. Yeah. Paul is, is writing here in the face of death, in actuality, brothers and sisters, as he's writing to those at Philippi. And in this third chapter, Paul is more reflective than his previous writings. A lot of his writings was a description of the church or condemnation of believers. A lot of his writings had dealt with his own personal anger towards what he felt the church could have been. But in Philippi, by the time he gets to Philippi, he is a very reflective individual. Frontline, uh, PBS did the frontline for the last two nights, on last night and on uh, Tuesday night, and which... Um, they talked about the great divide from Obama to Trump. Uh. I didn't particularly really care or agree with their premise or their narrative. Okay. The premise is, is that when Trump became as he is and caught a great divide, they said it didn't start with him. They referred to President Obama, President Obama as a polarizing figure, as someone who people would discuss and where everybody cannot agree. Huh. Even though Obama didn't start it as well, they were very keen in their description and their narrative by stating the fact that the Great Divide was caused by both men. You all know, brothers and sisters, that um, Donald Trump is a referendum on Barack Obama. Yes. Uh huh. He is their response yes. to how they really felt. The country has always felt like that. I, and I think, quite frankly, sure I'm probably going to get this news a bit, but that's okay. I think it was necessary for Trump to come around because mm. he had fallen in love with the prospect of what was. Yeah. Uh -huh. What we thought was going to be. Uh -huh. And what Trump did was to return people back to the reality of their secret thinking. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> how they thought. This being Dr. King's birthday. I do. Uh, we always talk, Dr. Kelly, about the march on Washington, uh -huh. August 1963. That's where, that's where we can pop mentalize King in this very romantic version mm -hmm. of how people write about him. Yeah. Uh -huh. We hardly ever talk about April 4th, 1967, when Dr. King preached at the Riverside Church and talked about the war in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't uh, talk about 1967, but many of his colleagues said to him not to come up against the yeah, war because Lyndon Johnson has done so much for us. Mm -hmm. Why should we come against him now? Yeah. Huh. And here is the interesting thing about the church is that the church should never ever compromise its values. Hello. Hey. They should always, like Dr. Emanuel Scott said, let the church be the church. Mm -hmm. and that it should always have the characteristics of Christ to the point where we look just like him. Huh. Now, Paul, when he talks about obtaining, he's, he, he's not, he's not, he, he, he almost sounds like the voice of God or the voice of the writer when he says that, talked about David, David uh, having a heart for God. He is in pursuit of God's heart. Yeah. And Paul is saying in the third chapter here in Philippians that he himself, I have not obtained that. He says, and I could be held at fault. Uh -huh. Because what Paul was saying is that there were those in the Philippi church who got so used to doing church uh -huh. that they got to be servants of the Lord. All right. Let me let me see if I can bring this down a little for now. one moment. Is that sometimes we so we get so consumed with the doing of church. Yeah. Right? that we forget that we're children of the living God. All right. And with that comes the challenge for every man and woman to be able to know where we come from. Now, uh, I had a preacher say to me one time, 
Because you know, Cam, I don't believe in black liberation theology. I believe in liberation theology, but I don't believe in black liberation theology. I said, well, they call it Hebrew liberation theology. Because they're the ones that are demonstration of how when we talk about God being a liberator of our soul, it does not exclude God being a liberator for our lives. Right? All right. And for what we do. And so Paul is this men this writing. And he says, he says, I want to know Christ. All right. Now just the sentence alone. Yeah. Is 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 a powerful sentence. Yes. How do you want to know him, Paul? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because knowing Christ is not just words. Uh huh. It also becomes a familiarity <coughs> with his struggle and his death. Amen. So how do you want to know him? I mean, do you you just want to know him superficially? Do you just want to know him when you meet in the synagogue? Do you just want to know him on Sunday? I have declared, brothers and sisters, by my own personal life, that this is not just Sunday for me. All right. All right. All right. When you can lay down at night. Mm -hmm. Knowing full well that your heart is at peace. Well. And your mind is serene. Say that. And when you can get up early in the morning and thank God for another day. Amen. The reason why I should not make Sunday the priority of knowing Christ is because every day. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord blesses us. Yeah. It is what your pastor says all the time. There are blessings everywhere. Uh-huh. And if there are blessings everywhere, that means there are blessings every day. Uh-huh. I'm willing to say there are blessings every second. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm willing to believe that the kind of blessings that every time we inhale, yeah, well, is because God has permitted. It. Yeah. Every time we exhale, is because God has That's permitted. That's right. So every time our eyes blink, yeah, whether whether by flirtatious means or just by the simple fact of blinking, yeah, okay, because God has made it simple. I think every time we walk, every time we get up out of our bed and we walk. Because God has made it possible. Yes, yeah, right. right. I want to know Christ, yeah. and to know Him, not to just know Him. Mm -hmm. But he, he He says something else because He's now stretching Himself and not being limited by His own human understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to know Him in the power of His resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's saying I also want to know about Him of how to keep getting up. Ah. And keep rising above my situation. Ah. Because sometimes when people get locked, knocked down, they stay down. Yeah. 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 They, they don't yeah. feel the need to get up because it was a struggle. So when they get knocked down, they feel the need. But but he says, I don't just want to know him as Christ. Uh -huh. I want to know him and what he's connected to. Yeah. The power of his resurrection. There's been some resurrection stories that have come over here. Mm -hmm. Throughout your own lives, yeah, that God has brought you from one degree of grace to the other. Hey, hey, hey! You think that you wasn't going to get up, but here you are. Hey! And the sister talked about her sister having sugar with the over four hundred uh, of, of the numbers as it relates to sugar. That's and be able to recover. That's resurrection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's on the way to rise. Yeah. Because it didn't take her out. Yeah. But God does allow some things. For us to recognize the fact that the only one that we should rely on is him. That's right. Yes, sir. Why should I rely on him? And why should I not? Huh. Because that's really when we can't say anything else. That's the name we call on when we get into some dark situation. That's right. We don't call up our first cousins. We don't call up people in our neighborhood. We call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because y'all do know there's power in the name. Power. You do know there's power in the power. name. Power. There's something about, about that the name. name. Of Jesus. And that's why when we gather on Sunday morning, it comes to the point that, that even as we face situations out there, when we come here, uh -huh. we celebrate our Christ. Yeah. The building is the place where we worship. Right. Yeah. Yes. People are the church. There you go. Uh -huh. and, and even though church can have its disagreements, well, we still family. Yeah. yeah amen. Even though the church can have its adversarial moments. We still the church. Yeah. Because at some point, it was, we're going to all be one anyway. anyway. Now, some, people, right. some people are not going to do it. But at the same time, you come into your own life knowing full well that the Lord has brought me this far. Yeah. Even when I didn't ask for it. Yeah. Paul yeah. is writing to those that those five because he sees the discord that is happening in that church. He sees the discord. This is, this is, this is the same Paul. He is a scholar, spoke 13 different languages, seven of them fluently, uh, sat at the feet of Camellia, one of the great scholars of that time. Here's Paul. 
Here's Paul, the original, one of the original persecutors of the early church. Yep, sure. Right. And this is the reason why we ought not to judge people because you never know who God's going to use. That's right. The same man that persecuted the early church became sure the same did. man that most that wrote most of the New Testament. Yeah. And in his writing, he yeah. saw the characteristics of Paul in different ways. Yeah. So yeah. you just don't know who God's going to use. That's yeah. right. The person sitting next to you, your friend, That's your girl, right. your boy. Yeah, uh -huh. And then the adversary is sitting in front of you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, uh -huh. man, I sure wish I had a franchise. Yeah, yeah, you do. Because the thing is, the reality is that we ought to, we, we, we will not remain that way. Mm -hmm. Because the God is going to do something in our life. And from every experience, we're going to learn something. He sure will. I, I would have never thought in my 60, 70 years on this earth, I would have never thought. That I would be 67. Uh huh. Not because I was I had a death wish. Because when you're 18, you always think you're gonna be 18. Uh huh. Even when you're 25, you no, still think you're gonna be 18. Up. Uh huh. Yeah. The joy. Looked up a few years ago. I mean, I was 49 then, and he got the nerve to send me an AARP card. <laughs> 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 yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't wait. <laughs> they show you coming. Being at 49 years of age. Okay. And, and, and this is really where when God tacks years into our lives is because he wants us to be a witness and to take inventory yes. of our own lives and see where the Lord has brought us. Yeah, amen. I'm telling you, God is great. He's yes, he is. is. And then Paul says, not that I have already obtained all this mm -hmm. or have already arrived at my goal. Because his goal is to know Christ fully. But if I kept, I press. And here's what happens. And one of the greatest enemies of the church is complacency. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Complacency is one of the great enemies of the church. Because complacency, complacency says we've already succeeded. We don't have to go no further. No further. We've already succeeded in some things. We don't have to go no further. And that's why, the reason why Paul says I press because he knows that complacency is holding him back. Uh -huh. So I have to strain, he says, mm -hmm. so that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Paul is, is really teaching us a lesson in Christ's fellowship. He's teaching us a lesson that we don't have to be able to succumb to certain times of complacency, complacency or laziness. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Or because we've been in the church all of our lives. Uh -huh. What a terrible testimony to be in the church all of our lives. Huh. And still don't know him. Lord. Lord. Why are we bigger at choir rehearsal? Who gets the soul? Somebody ought to think about being the best background singer you can be. Hey, hey, hey. One of my teachers died two years ago. Uh, this one, Pastor Kelly, and he was Marjorie Krasinski. She stood at four feet, 11 inches tall. Marjorie Brzezinski used to say when we used to come into class, she says, everybody books under the seat, sit at the edge of your seat, and as you sit at the edge of your seat, we're going to do the scale. When I ask you to sing, you do not sing from your throat. You sing from your diaphragm. Okay. Because the only way you're going to be able to modulate is not to sing from your throat, but to sing from your diaphragm. So Marjorie Brzezinski would get us through the scale, you know, ah. And when we pushed it with the diaphragm, I didn't realize how high I could go. All right. But it took this Polish Jewish woman who taught this African American boy huh. that you don't put pressure on your voice, but you let your diaphragm take the pressure off your voice so that you can give it the greatest power that you can give. Well. And the complacency of the church is that we're only used to the throat. Yeah. Yeah. The throat of attendance. Huh. The throat of membership. All right. Fellowship. Well, come on here. The throat of, of being here every Sunday and still going away angry. Well, Lord, Lord. That's the throat. All right. But push it from your diaphragm. Okay. All right. That's where uh, worship comes in because so when you push it from your diaphragm, all those things that you're going through, they, they don't even matter because you Hey. Of your life. Yeah. Taking it off the throat of your life. And as a result of that, you 
be able to push uh-huh. like you've never pushed before. Yeah. All right. Don't these musicians know that. They all know that. And I mean, Lady Kim Kelly, she knows that. There's never a time where I have heard her sing where she did not push and she did not give it her best. But you know, and sometimes yeah. what we do is that in our choirs, we only give enough for the moment. Jesus. Huh. Only for the moment. God has given us the willpower to be able to do it and to sing like it's our last time on earth. Pray like it's our last time on earth. Serve like it's our last time on earth. And to preach like it's our last time on earth. Because tomorrow's not promised. You can't wait to get on the stage and all the lights are on. You got to be able to worship God right now. Worship God when the whole church is not worshiping. Worship God when you're the only one standing up in your seat. Worship God in the darkness of your life. Worship God for who he is because I want to know him. Yeah, yeah. And the power of his resurrection. Yeah, yeah. All right. To know him in totality means I've got to yield myself to him willingly. God has been so good to us. Yeah. Even as a people, God has been good. There's, there's, there's much denial. There are many black people, even today, who are always bragging about their Indian heritage. They always brag about it. Um, I got some Indian. And I always got to keep returning to this because they always want to brag about it. Every African American does have some Indian, but they won't talk about the Indian. No, uh huh. Never talk about that. Yeah. So they won't say I'm Choctaw, Blackfoot, and Cherokee. Uh huh. <laughs> Yep. I want to be able to remind you. I want to be able to remind you. I want to remind you that that you are a descendant of two people. Yeah. Uh huh. People that was had taken away from their country. Yeah. And the people that had a country taken away from them. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> and you break. Hello. Tell a story. It is. It is this 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 thing where Paul said, brothers and sisters. I do not consider myself to yet be taken, to apprehend, to take. He says, I have I can't even brag about being apprehended myself. Jesus. Or taken. Yeah. But then God takes hold of us. And even, think about this. Even when we're dodging God, He's still around us. Yeah. yeah. You want to know why? Okay. You know why? I'm glad you're you okay. reason why. Because God eventually knows you're going to come to him anyway. So, yeah. so even though we dodge God, God is still, I'm just glad that God is not that impatient where he still waits on us because he really wants to save us anyway. Yeah. All but right. You know that John 3, 16, God so loved us. Love the world. The world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. Believe in him. And this speaks to the argument of even if we're prejudiced hey. toward people's faiths, it says that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. believe in it will not perish but have everlasting life. life. Yeah. You and I can't afford to be purchased for people whose faith differs from ours. Yeah. Yes, we believe in Jesus Christ. That will never stop. Yes, we believe that he was born of a virgin. That will never stop. Yes, we believe that his blood covers us. Yeah. Yeah. His blood has been our protection all this time. Yeah. Yeah. You, do you think the blood stopped on Calvary? Uh. The blood just kept on trickling down the generations of people. And the reason why we're covered is because of the blood. And you do know back in the Old Testament, next he says, when God gave the instructions, he said, look, I make sure you cover the doorposts. Uh-huh. Because the death angel is going to rise. Yeah. But why do you cover the doorpost when I see the blood? Hey. The identification of the blood yeah. when I see the blood. And even though there are those who will die, but if I see the blood hanging over your doorpost, yeah. and hanging over your family, yeah. and hanging over your home, yeah. I will pass. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Covering of Christ's blood. Thank you, God. Thank we you. celebrate Christ's fellowship. That's the other thing. Christ's fellowship. You got to live up to your name. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. It's fellowship. Yeah. Fellowship. Yeah. It, it's not just eating. It's not just the Lord's Supper. It's afterwards. Uh huh. Yeah. Talking to folks. Yeah. Uh huh. Speaking to people. Yeah. yeah. In the hallway. Yeah. Rather than bypass them in the sanctuary. It's fellowship. Yeah. When a person is not feeling their best, but you give them a smile and a handshake. Fellowship. Fellowship. That speaks confidence into somebody else when somebody else is going through something. Fellowship. Yes, sir. That even when you came to church, you wasn't feeling the best, but somebody said something. To it's not necessarily yeah. Yeah. Just your caring heart. Yes. And how you felt about the individual yes, makes sir. such a difference in their life. You don't even know how many lives that you have touched. Uh-huh. 
to be Christ-like. You know, yeah. the word Christian was uttered and was said, Pastor Kelly, sarcastically. Those are those Christians that answer. Uh -huh. He said sarcastically. Okay. Yeah. You know, they talked about that they were they were drunk, you know, with new wine. And he, even the word Christian at the time was talked about sarcastically. Okay. And so when you say that to a Christian, it's not just a, it's not just a, it's just like a, my wife and I ate breakfast a couple weeks ago at IHOP. You know, we wanted to get the senior meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Speak for yourself. Okay. <laughs> and Pastor Kelly, there was these two ladies that came in and they were talking really loud. They were you know, they wanted everybody to know that they were from church, you know. Oh, Jesus. And the lady, the lady asked them, she says, um, what, what do you have? So she says, she asked the lady, what do you have, what do you have to drink? She says, well, we have, we have tea, we have coffee, and we have ice coffee. And the lady, deep Christian lady says, I don't drink coffee. That's not what she asked. Okay. She was responding to your question, what do you have to drink? So she said, I don't drink coffee, as if. Drinking coffee is some kind of a... Omen or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As if it's some kind of a sin. Uh-huh. She don't drink coffee. So what? So what? We didn't ask you that. You can't be free, but we don't know what else. Okay. <laughs> At least we don't have any of an idea. I'm not going to tell anybody what I don't do. Okay. It's not going to do that because, you know, after a while, you begin to tell on yourself. How about that? All right. Just keep it to yourself. Uh-huh. Or, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. <laughs> but I just couldn't keep it to you yourself. <laughs> Paul goes on and says, well, one thing I do, this Paul says, he says, forgetting those things, that were behind me. Now, now, mind you, he's speaking in reference to the fact that those at Philippi were so stuck on being in church without yeah. knowing Christ. Hmm. Getting those things, traditional things, that are behind me and pressing towards the things that are before me. Yeah. Pressing toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Paul is really making the substantial uh, uh, words here by telling us that it's just more than what we think it is. Right. I think that the frustration that comes is that when Dr. King, you know, we talk about him in his, in his birthday, uh, Dr. King's frustration was was that, that, that when he died, he didn't die with many friends, you know. Amen. You know he didn't die. He, he, he died. He had all of his friends. They were they wanted they wanted the law. They were they were they were so glad that they had the victory to sit next to white people at the counter. Yeah. Uh huh. They wanted the law to be effect. They wanted that. And King said that there were black men being sent over to Vietnam to kill yellow men. Yeah, yeah. And he says, I'm against it all. So while there's the romanticism of King in 63, we forget about the King in 1967. Yeah. Okay. The King in 1967 is hardly quoted. Okay. At all. Okay. Because they just wanted that. And why interfere with Lyndon Johnson? right now. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I, I, I submit to you tonight that that Larry Camp is not a perfect person. I gotta tell you that. Uh -huh. okay. gotta tell you. Uh, Larry Camp is not a perfect person. I ain't gonna call out nobody's name. Larry Camp is not a perfect person. But I can tell you something. As I get older and I'm reminded every day I'm getting older. Not not that I have back aches and I, I, I'm not even talking about that. Just looking in the mirror is a reminder. Just looking at lines I ain't never saw. Uh, <laughs> just looking at grades popping up in areas that I've never seen. Just, just reminding, reminding myself how I used to get out of there. And, and how I get out now, which is not bad, by the way. It's just, it's just a tad slow. Okay. But I embrace okay. that because. What makes me thankful is that God has brought me from one degree of grace to That's the other. right. That's right. Paul says, I just want to know. Thank you. I want to know Christ. I just, I just, I just want to know him. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to know him? 
Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-eight years really? is something to shout about. Yeah. Now there are those who've been here from the moment of its inception. Denise is one of them. That came from from the very beginning and know where this church has come from. Hmm. Yeah. You yeah. saw some dark days, but you saw some victorious things. Yeah. Amen. You've seen some down moments, but you also experienced some high moments. Mm -hmm. Only a God can let you do that and appreciate it all. Yeah. Amen. That causes us to, to quote Romans 8.28. And we know uh -huh. that all things work together, together. for good to yeah. them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. We know uh -huh. by being able to want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, that's why we're here on a Wednesday night. Amen. Why? Because Sunday is not promise. That's right. So you got to treat Wednesday like Sunday. You yeah. Gotta, you got to treat Wednesday like Sunday. I'm sorry. You got to treat Wednesday like Sunday. Sometimes all people want is the Sunday come. But you got to treat Wednesday like Sunday. Yeah. You want to know why? Because Thursday is coming and you may not get there. That's so right. So you got to treat Wednesday like Sunday. Yeah. You got to treat it like a high holy day. Anytime the people of God can meet the Together on this night, that's a time to praise God. That's a time to lift up your voices yeah. and praise and to thank God for what He's done. 38 years is the reason why we celebrate Christ because God has been so good to you as a church. 38 years in this community, and yet there are those who have fallen and never come back. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God. We're still here in this place, and we're still able to lift up our hands and knowing full well that God has brought us this far. I wouldn't exchange. My journey for nobody. Not for nobody. I might have questioned my journey. I might not have liked that journey, but I don't exchange it for nobody. That's right. And when I say God is good all the time, I mean that. Okay. When we say that God is good all the time, because to every situation that we were in, that's right. Stuff we should not have been, places we should not have gone, and God was good to us anyhow. Because that's the reason to praise God that He covers us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. That's God. He's so good. Yes. And he's worthy to be great. Yes. So brothers and sisters, I want to say like Paul, yes. I want to know him yes. and the power of his resurrection. Yes. I don't come here to show off for anybody. Uh -huh. I came here as a person who's been in the dark situation. Yes. But the Lord has brought us to the light. Yes. I don't come here to be seen and see who I can see. But I come here because this is the Christ Fellowship Church. Uh -huh. Now, I don't have to be at Bethlehem to know who good, how good God is. Uh -huh. Jesus is in this place. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help and strength comes from the Lord. I thank God for His grace and I thank Him for His mercy. God is my light and my salvation. Who should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And who should I be afraid? And so I know it's a Wednesday night. But I'm sure I'm going to make it feel like a Sunday morning. Listen, brothers and sisters. I got a Sunday morning feeling on a Wednesday night. Because God has been so good. Isn't God good to you? Has he not watched over your family? Did he not put a roof over your head?
situation is. That's why we lift up our hands and thank God for another day. Thank God for another minute. Thank God for another second. Thank God. I tell you, thank God. I'm so blessed that I can call his name. What's his name? What's his name? Celebrate. It wouldn't take long.